Okay, so what, what were your, like, not necessarily from the report, mm -hmm. but from anything during the week. And yeah. tomorrow you're going to go through, like, a real coordinator day with Monica. All right. Because she's teaching the CRC Academy. So oh, she's sure. going to, she's going to teach you, like, everything tomorrow. Basically, she's going through everything with you tomorrow that would take, like, three months in the class. Oh, awesome. At least to refresh my memory. Yeah, you get a crash course. <laughs> and then if you still want to join that class, we'll get you in for like almost nothing. Okay? But if you feel like you need it. If you don't, you, you don't have to. But it, I think it's good because it starts next week. Oh, really? It might benefit you. Like for all. Yeah, it'll be like super, for you, like super, super, super cheap. <clears throat> okay, so what, uh... From the report or from anything, like any topics with Chris that we were not clear about or no, any sure. findings? The pants, you did the pants, right? Did you score it? Oh yeah, I have it. You have it? I have it there. <laughs> okay, we'll look at it later. Okay. After we're done with this. <laughs> uh, we'll log in to my system and see what I put. <laughs> I'm actually, you know, excited to see I did vessels. Did you job like that? Job. Did you like that? The process, um, the experience was um, was good. Um, Positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. It was good. Um, at first, I you know, been the first time, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. But I guess as I went on with the questions, I you know, I you tried really my best to be comfortable. It made sense why you did good when you told me later that you were that you are a boarding care manager. Do yeah. you guys call it boarding care there too? Or you call it something else? We'll call it group home. But I think I like boarding care. It makes boarding it sound care. a little bit more um, professional. Professional, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what they're called here. They have group homes here too. But the boarding cares are like for people with mental illness. Mm -hmm. Positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Very much just for psych studies. I mean, obviously, it's schizophrenia, mm. right? Now, one of the scales, Columbia Severity Suicide Scale, which I'm going to actually talk to Monica about getting you to be certified tomorrow for that, because we're going to okay. add that to your resume. CSSRS, Columbia Severity Suicide Rating Scale. Mm. Where can I say that? You can actually get, yeah, you monitored that one, right? And probably here today, too. You can um, be a raider at a site, yeah. right? You have a bachelor's degree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have a master's? No. Okay, so for, you can do these two skills, okay? For some, you need a master's. For some, you need, like, a doctorate level. For some, you need to be an MD. But there's different skills. Like, you've monitored a bunch of them right now, and on Wednesday and on Tuesday, right? But this, these ones, you actually, especially this one, CSSRS, you can get certified tomorrow. Monica. Yes. Tomorrow, let's have Adi get certified as CSSRS, okay? Okay. Okay. So, this is really good because he's a board and care manager. Wow. In Connecticut. Oh my gosh. So too he bad did a pass. He actually. <laughs> huh? Too bad you're not here. <laughs> I know. Too bad you're not here. I told yeah. him already. Like we're you're yeah. the ones that we. Uh, reach out to yeah. when we tell mm -hmm. even when we're telling these people on live stream go to your yes. group homes boarding cares and start recruiting patients for sites like people like Monica go mm -hmm. then she still goes now she's training other people to go oh, okay because she's getting busy but yeah like it's that's the fundamental so okay. he did a pants on Tuesday with me okay and he was like so good I was like hey, you're like a natural and he told me why because he's used to the patient population. So tomorrow he wants to get CSSRS certified. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Easy. And then Monica's going to sure. show you like yeah. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Monica's going to show you a bunch of stuff uh, like with yeah. being a coordinator. Okay. Tomorrow too. Okay. So these are the two things for CNS that we're going to add to your resume. Okay. Uh, so what did you find in the report? And and look when you. When you go tell, like when you start interviewing, because you're gonna probably interview with sites, okay? Like in Connecticut, you have a lot of uh, academic institutions, mm -hmm. even like Yale. You're gonna start interviewing with them, 
for a coordinator position or a research assistant position, okay. you can tell them that when you interned in California, you were doing monitoring reports, and you can explain to them, um, uh, you know, that exactly. I understand exactly. But we had explain. a friend that she applied for the University of um, Colorado. Colorado, and she's she was in your program a year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jackie was her name. Mm -hmm. She got a job as a coordinator at University of Colorado, doing the exact same stuff you're doing now. Like literally the same week, she did the, all this stuff. Okay, and she didn't do a pan. She got a job, so you when you go interview, you say, yeah, I'm even familiar with monitoring reports. Mm -hmm. I know what they look for. I've done a few myself. Bring that with you. That's okay. proof. Look, I did it. I know what they're looking for. I know in regulatory, this is what they're looking for. I know in source and IP, this is what they're looking for. They're going to love you. Mm -hmm. They're going to love you because nobody else that they interview does that. Even experienced coordinators don't have access to those reports. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, tomorrow it, you'll get him yeah. this, and then she'll do the CRC Academy for you, like the whole thing, condensed in one day. Okay. <laughs> That'd be amazing. All right. <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> what else did you discover? What did I discover? Uh, I mean, um... I don't think I really discover like anything major. Um, either, to the, either today or uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Well, yesterday you reviewed with Chris, right? I did review with Chris, and there was lots of um, you know findings and um, which in that study, yeah, which were which I'll say was uh, very very educational. Okay. Um, what was the most eye-opening thing for you, or like the top three? Hmm. Well, I'll say I think my number one one would be. There was a particular, you know, document that had um, a duplicate, and at first it didn't appear to me like any problem until you know. Oh, that one page that's duplicate. Yeah, and I looked at it and I said, oh. You know, maybe because so the um, IP numbers were different. Now, Chris goes, you know, there's a bigger problem. Even though I scribbled it down saying, oh, why is there a duplicate? But it didn't occur to me like that could be source. Yeah. Right? So that source, could... duplicate. So one page. So for example, in the source, if it's page one of ten, right? So you're saying like page three, there was actually two copies. Two of copies, page three. yeah. With different information. For the same patient? It was, yeah. For the bottom part, yeah. So that makes you wonder what's going on there, right? Because these are... And then did you look in the other binders? Was this also a mistake there or was it just in that one subject? I think it was just that one and... Um, and which part of Alcoa is this? Mm, what would that be now? Attributes? Original. Original, okay. Which one is original? One's got to be a copy. You know, one's got to be original. Hmm. I mean, this is a very serious issue. Even the FDA, if they audit this, they're going to find that. It's a bad finding. Like, why are there two pieces of data for the same visit for the same subject? Explain. And there was no note to file or anything. Not, yeah. So as a CRA, what would you do in that situation? Or, oh, um, you know, talk to the monitor and tell them to, you know, try and find which is the original and whichever is original gets a sticky note so that, you know, he explains why there's yes. a duplicate. So if anyone is doing an audit, you know, they can easily, you know, it becomes more attributes. Um, they'll be able to make attributes to it to say, okay, this is why you have these two copies yes. of this page. Could you, in theory, throw one of these pages away? No, it shouldn't. Okay, good. It shouldn't throw any 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 copy Correct. away. So it's note to file. That has to explain why. Why did these 
why are there two different pieces of data for the same visit of the same subject? It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It's an Alcoa violation, original. Okay. Um, as a coordinator, how do you avoid this happening? Mm, no, Just take extra time and pay extra attention to details. Um, do it right the first time. Basically, what happened there is somebody realized later that they forgot to put something, something. in there. Mm -hmm. And they forgot to shred, and then a monitor sees it. But you know what? A monitor didn't even catch that. Our students catch it. Yeah, Chris said the same thing. <laughs> so the, in an interview, you say, look, I know these are like common things. What else did you find that was like uh, common? Mm. Like missing headers, right? Missing headers. But as far as like protocol compliance, and IP, a big one is IP accountability. Mm. IP accountability is a big one, especially in the early phases. Like IP accountability is, like, like phase one, IP accountability is nothing more important. Phase two and three, it's more a matter of uh, making sure that the subjects are taking the right dose without going over or under what's allowed by the protocol. Okay. Alright, did you find any of that in there, in that study? Or in this mm. one today? No, actually. No. And you're going to do IP accountability with Monica tomorrow. Oh, okay. Right? Now what about regulatory? What did you find in the regulatory? Regulatory. What, uh, you, you've now seen like three different reg binders, right? Yeah. They're pretty much the same, but they're also organized differently maybe. But the contents are the oh, same. same. Mm -hmm. So it's just the fundamentals. Like in this book, it explains everything. Like the essential documents, you know, okay. 1572, mm -hmm. FDF, CVs. Medical licenses, training logs, uh, delegation of authorities log. Okay, these are essential documents. Investigator brochure signature page, protocol amendments, IRB uh, approval, ICF approval. ICF approval is very important because you, it goes on the ICF log. And if a patient doesn't sign the most recent version of the approved consent, it's a deviation. It's a deviation. If they're in the study already and the consent is amended, they have to sign it. They have to sign at their next visit. They have to sign. If they miss that, it's a deviation. Even if they sign it at the next visit after that, it's still a deviation at that visit that they missed. That they missed. And that shows that there's a process error with that site. Process of consent. Okay. Did Chris tell you about process of consent? Every site has to have a process of consent. Not only that, has to be documented. Every screening visit or every time uh, a patient reconsents. Yeah. Should be a note to file. I hope you saw it in here. Yes, I did. did. I, I did see it in the file, yeah. Thank God. So what did they write? What are some things they write on this process of consent? You know, it's simple. It's, you know, who did the consent with the patient? What details? Yeah. Was it Kobe? Was it Dr. So-and-so? Was it Dan? Now, as a CRA, you pay attention who they're writing. You go on delegation log. Is that he person does. on there? Oh, it's, oh, okay. Because if they put Monica... Mm -hmm. yeah, could be a little bit that, though. yeah, they put Monica consented with patient in a private quiet room. Patient was asked the question if they understood all the usual stuff. And then you see Monica's not on the DOA log for consenting. That's a problem. So what would you do if you discovered this? If you're a CRA. Well, or if you're the CRC. Mm, that's a deviation, you know, you have to let the... 
this the monitoring team know and um, you know the yeah, I think the, the the site coordinator. So is it a deviation? It is a deviation. Yeah. But what if they tell you, well, no, you know, she's we just never put that check next to her name inadvertently. That's not so. I don't think that's a good reason. Correct. So in those cases, that's a sponsor. Sponsor will determine. Okay. Uh, okay. But the sponsor will, has no way of knowing this is even going on unless you're writing in your report. Okay. So that's why CRAs are paid the big bucks to do these kind of things. Maybe the site doesn't even know. Okay, Monica's doing it, but she we forgot to put number A next to her name, which says ICF. It's just mm -hmm. inadvertent. It could be. But then where's the note to file? Mm -hmm. And where's the late entry A with the PI initial and date late entry? Right? Because that's the way to do it as per Alco and GCP. Okay. So sponsor will determine, but they have no way of knowing this is even happening without CRA putting it in their report. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens? CRAs miss this as well. And then the sponsor audits or the FDA audits. And now they're going to look who was that CRA, how many times did they did monitor they? this and not see this. And could that possibly lead to... Um in a closure of the sites or them pulling out, pulling the sites off the um, study chart? If, if something like that, no. If it's inadvertent, that they just forgot to put a letter, but she's like, and then they, they can clarify it with a note to file. Late entry, that's not enough to uh, warrant taking the study away. Okay. But if, if this combined with other issues, like Re repeatedly informed consents being missed, or repeatedly having duplicate pages of source in combination with all this stuff, and then the protocol compliance, so you get deviations as well. Yes. Okay. Now, there are some serious things like that affect patient safety that they can pull the study, the sponsor can pull the study from the site. Usually, it's things that involve patient safety, like giving the patient twice the IP on accident. You know, they can die. I mean, mm -hmm. they can overdose, right? It's just bad, 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 good. It's not good clinical practice. It's not GCP, it's BCP, bad clinical practice. That those kind of things, that's really why the CRAs get paid for what they do. Because these little things, like admin things, are important to catch. But these safety things directly can affect the patient's safety. Directly. And if you are a CRA and you miss it one time, then the site thinks they're doing it the right way. They're going to repeat the mistake for all their versions. Mm -hmm. Until you catch it. Maybe you catch it by patient number four. And now you, they're going to ask, your sponsor is going to ask why you didn't catch the other three. Right? Or even worse, something happens to the patient. So that's where you got to pay attention as a CRA, patient safety. All these admin things are important too, but patient safety like IP, protocol compliance, okay, con meds. Pay attention to the restricted medications. Every protocol has a restricted exclusionary meds. If you, if the patient is taking this class of meds, and they won't always write the names of the drug. They just put the class that they're in. Right? Like um, like benzodiazepines or SSRIs. They're not going to put Seroquel, say Prexa, every time. All right? They're going to write the class. So you as a CRA and as a coordinator, you need to know. Well, okay, well, Seroquel is this. Ativan is a benzo. Because if you see Ativan in the, sh in the source of the patient and you don't know that that's a benzodiazepine, right? And the con meds in the protocol says benzodiazepine excluded, you're going to read this and think, okay, I'm okay, that's Ativan. No, you're not okay. Yeah. That's the class of drugs. This is why they want therapeutic expertise too. Not just the fundamentals, but the therapeutic expertise. That's why for you, I think psych is perfect.
Because you have to have. You know the meds. Most of them. And you're going to learn, you've already probably learned a bunch of them. You've got to study, like, if you know you're being interviewed for a psychiatric clinic, okay. you're going to study schizophrenia, bipolar, you're going to study, you're going to Google what's the common treatments for schizophrenia and bipolar. You know? okay. And then it's going to give you all the stuff, all the drugs. For oncology, same thing, like for breast cancer. What is the common treatments for breast cancer? You know, what are the pre-medications? Oncology is complicated. There's a lot of medications. It's medications you give them before you even give them the medication. And then medication for after. For psych, it's a little simpler. But every disease, every condition has its own little language you have to learn within the overall context of the bigger clinical research framework. Okay. All right, so it's a lot. It's a lot. You get to know this stuff. Con meds, what's exclusionary, especially the prohibited meds. Now, sometimes they put exclusionary meds because of safety concerns, because they're contraindicated. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the sponsors put exclusionary meds because it's going to cheat the results. Because this exclusionary med is so good, that we're not going to know if it's that medication or mm -hmm. ours that's making that's the right. patient improve. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not a dangerous thing, but it's a data quality thing, right? Either way, a sponsor will think it's horrible. Of course, the worst one is the patient safety. Last thing you want to do is allow a patient taking an excluded med because it's contraindicated with the study drug and the study. Okay. And the PIs that do that show that they have no oversight. The coordinators that do that show that they don't know what they're doing. And those are the ones that get pulled to the study from immediately. Like just within the first one, first patient. Mm -hmm. So the CRA needs to catch these things. Okay. So the process of consent, you've got to know. All right. You've got to know the process of consent. Patient sat in a choir room. You should read it again before you go tomorrow. Patient sat in a quiet room with whomever. Patient was allowed time to ask questions. The patient understood that their participation is voluntary. The patient was given a copy of their consent to take home with them. Uh, patient understands all risks, benefits of being in the study, all those kind of things. Okay. What else? What else? Uh, anything else that you have uh, questions or concerns about? Comments, questions, or concerns? No, at the moment, though. Um. Regulatory, pretty straightforward. You understand um, how what triggers other things to occur, like a change in the 1572. Let's say a new sub investigator. All right. Oh, well, they might ask you an interview. Okay. What do you do when a new sub investigator joins the clinic for a study? You have to obtain uh, all the 1572s. Make sure all CVs and. Um, um, Required documents are, you know, obtained and um, you know filed appropriately. And then training log, right? Yeah. Delegation log. Financial disclosure form. Yep. You're right. And as a coordinator, you're gonna have to do that too. Like new new sub I, you should instantly think, okay, this is what I have to do. Start date. What if a sub I leaves the clinic? He's gone, no more. Wherever somebody lives. Yeah. He's still in box six of the 1572. Box six lists all the cell buys. But now you monitor and you discover that cell is not here anymore. Should be removed. 1572 is going to be updated again. 
signed again, DOA log should have an end date oh, for that sub by. For that sub by. That's it. Okay. There's no need. You still keep these things on file, the old ones. You're not going to get rid of them. But you do update 1572 and DOA log. And you just got to know front and back. So what um, these things, what happens? I believe for every step within the site, for everyone that lives, there should be end date somewhere for them or not? Yes, no? yes. For every staff that leaves, there need to be an end date on the elevation log. For every staff that continues until the end of the study, at closeout visit, Monday I'm doing a closeout visit, end date for everybody, including PI. So whose responsibility is to put the end date, say, you know, the story is still ongoing and, you know, say, the coordinator list, we, we should put that end date in the log? Only one can initial that, the OA log. Only one person can initial that, the OA log. The PI? That's right. Only the PI. Okay. The individual can initial their own names, mm -hmm. they have to, but only the PI can put start and stop dates. Okay. Because there's an initial next to those as well. And sometimes a sig at the closeout, there's a signature on the bottom mm. of the OA log. And there's a signature on the bottom for the beginning, SIV. And there's a signature and date at the bottom for the closeout visit. Basically, a closeout visit is a SIV just backwards. You know, SIV, you're supposed to get IRB approval to start. At closeout visit, you get IRB closeout acknowledgement. That's it. All these things still there, but DOA log is end date now. Okay. Nothing's done with the 1572. You make sure all the queries are closed in the EDC. You make sure that they're all IP is accounted for, like completely. Any discrepancies are addressed in NOTA files. And in your monitoring reports. Okay. okay. And then everything in between SIV and closeout visit are IMVs. Which is what you did today. And you see how detailed that is, right? Yeah, it is. Look, <laughs> you know that, if you know that, you know everything there is to know. To be a coordinator on this here. You're not going to know, like, the meds and the common assessments for every indication. But you're going to know the fundamentals. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to know what's a benzodiazepine. I mean, you have to study that. Mm -hmm. But you're going to know this stuff. That doesn't change from study to study. Yeah, basics. Yeah, the fundamentals. So do you know that monitoring report? You know that's like the best cheat sheet to have. It's literally everything that's expected of you as a CRA. And... As a CRC, because the CRCs are really the ones addressing all of those concerns, which are called action items. Okay, the CRA finds action items, and then coordinators. It's the site, but practically speaking, it's the coordinator that resolves these action items. Okay. That's it. It's all the stuff. Is I mean, it's very complicated. But at the end of the day, it's very simple. It's that report. Yeah, but their report is detailed. There's no stone unturned on that thing. No stone left unturned. And you're going to monitor remotely uh, one of our oncology studies. You're going to be writing more of those reports even when you go back. Because <laughs> then you can apply for uh, oncology CRC or even re uh, like assistant positions. Like a CTA, clinical trial assistant, or mm -hmm. clinical research assistant is also really good. Especially if it's in oncology. And then you're going to build up all this knowledge too. Con meds, assessments, contraindicated meds, standard of treatments. Because this you're already going to know. You know this already. More or less.
Now you've got to get the domain expertise and the conditions. which is very different than the IMV. These visits, SIV, IMV, and closeout visit are all pretty much similar. SSV is totally different because you're, there's no source to look at, there's no IP to look at, there's no training logs or any of this stuff to look at Ooh. yet. It's just an inspection of the site, the site's capabilities, a tour of where they're going to store the IP, a close look at their processes for all these things, and how they're going to get their patients, their recruitment strategy, and the NPI and study coordinator experience. That's when they ask the PI, hey, in patients with schizophrenia, what's your standard of treatment at this site? That's when the coordinator needs to say, okay, well, this is what the PI, or better yet, the PI answers. Okay. They're going to ask if that's their private practice, if what's their standard. Okay. Because they want to know, remember, the monitor knows the IE criteria already at SIP, SSV. So the monitor is going to know what's the most challenging part of the inclusion-exclusion, and they're going to ask. Well, exclusion criteria 10 says patients that are taking Seroquel are not allowed in the study. Would that be a problem? How many of your patients take Seroquel? Mm. What percentage of your patients in the database taking Seroquel? If it's 100, you know they're not going to get any patients. Yeah. Right? Or if it's like 50, they say, okay, 50, okay. And then the PIs usually say, yeah, but, you know, if it's a requirement for them to wash off of it, to be in the study, we can do that. And then this is our process for doing that. This is SSV. Site selection. Yeah. We did SSV. Our previous students did SSV for the same study you're going to monitor. IMV. Previous mm -hmm. students did SSV because it wasn't ongoing yet. Okay. So it was like in real time as we were doing it. They were doing it. So you're now at this phase of that study, which is like the meat and potatoes of it. But this book explains every single thing. Yeah, I, um, I'm definitely going to read it. You have to. You have to. You're going to do well as a coordinator or as a research assistant or as even like an in-house here. I think with PANS and CSSRS you can do, and then you will also have oncology remote monitoring. Okay. With supervision, but you, you will have it. Okay. You're going to have options for research assistant or study coordinator roles. And that you just climb your way up to as far as you want to go. Because you can go anywhere you want, okay? Different levels. Assistant, coordinator, in-house CRA, CRA, project manager, lead CRA. Um, here you can get into regulatory affairs, consultant, owner, well, whatever you want to do, you can do it. But the, and this is all the same. It's just from different lenses. If you're at a site, you look at all this stuff with a different lens. If you're a CRO, you look at it with different lens. Mm -hmm. If you're a sponsor, different lens. If you understand all of those angles, which is where I'm trying to get at, man, you can do. You can work for anybody. Do anything they want. If, if, like, I'm going to get to the point where somebody says, can you do this? I'm going to say, yes, can you do this? Yes, can you do this? Yes. That's where you want to get to. Until you find a place where you like it, and you just stay there. Or if you want to keep growing, you can. I mean, I don't even know what's after these things. Who knows? Maybe changing the world or something. <laughs> who, know, who knows? It could be anything. But that's where it starts, like, and pretty much it all seems to be the same standard, like, um, you know, world, um, worldwide. That's right? all it is. All this stuff 
is under the umbrella of GCP. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like ICH GCP. It sounds simple, but then look at how messy this is. And we're not only covering like some. We're only covering the stuff that you remember to ask about. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much. There's so much, and we're not even talking about like the medicine. We're not talking about exclusionary meds. Okay, so if they're like every protocol is going to have a list of the exclusionary meds. Absolutely. Ask Monica tomorrow to show you. Okay, like even the protocol you have there, they're going to have mm -hmm. exclusionary meds. You got to know. You got to have that PDR, that that drug. There's like a drug. Um, book, but now we have Google. You don't even yeah. need that. Yeah, I, I use, I use, I do use some of those to see, you know, side effects are there. Yeah. What, what name do you call it again? PDR. No, no, no. Uh, is that saying Grupo? Board and care. Board and care. <laughs> Board and care. You like that one? I like that one. It's gonna be Board on your CV. Care. You'll never forget. It. I'll put it on your CV. Board and care. Yeah. So we do use some of that because, um, you know. It's not all the time you take a patient to the um, PCP or psych um, appointment and, uh, you know, you just want to know because many a times they won't tell you the side effects of the medication that they're trying to introduce, you know. That's right. So we try to, you know, um, equip ourselves with, into knowing, you know, what to expect because sometimes, you know, um, you just want to, you know, have the patient, you know, use this drug. They won't tell us. Exactly. Many other times they don't tell us what to exactly. expect. Exactly. And you got to know because some drugs, so not just exclusionary meds, okay? Exclusionary meds is important. Every protocol is going to tell you this class is excluded, this class is excluded, this class is allowed if you withdraw, if you, um, you take them off of it slowly. Mm. So you titrate them off or titrate them on. Okay, so every protocol is different, but not only that, you got to know the side effects of the con meds they're taking, yeah. right? Because like in oncology, for example, neutropenia is very low uh, white blood cell count, all right? That's a SAE that, or an AE for sure that is caused by chemo, okay? And the PI needs to be aware, they usually are in oncology, that, hey, maybe they need to adju adjust or skip a cycle because the neutropenia is, like, too low. That's dangerous. You can die of a cold. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so skip a cycle. And, and as a CRA, you're, like, extra set of eyes, like, making sure that they're aware. Because if they're busy or they're a big clinic, they could miss it. It's not good GCP by them, right? But they could miss it. Or the coordinator could, like, not put it that that's an AE, even though it is. So you gotta know the side effects of these kind of meds. Okay. Side effects, contraindications, um, common assessments for studies. These are two for schizophrenia. If they ask you what are some common assessments for schizophrenia, you should know. And all the other ones you looked at, CGI. Um, what are what are some other ones? Madras. For depression. Bars has aims for movements. Because why? Because those are side effects of the meds. The involuntary movements are side effects of the antipsychotics. Yeah. So they have those rating skills too, those assessments. Well, in oncology, they have different assessments. In asthma, different. In gastro, different. You got to know the common assessments for the indications that are on your CV. And for you, that's why I said psych, because of your background of boarding care. It's the best. That's going to go on your CV. Boarding care. Administrator. Yeah. Anything else? I'm not sure that can actually remember for now, though. No. Chris was quite thorough with me yesterday, so... That's what he said. <laughs> he, he was very, really, very really thorough. And Monica will be tomorrow, too. And then you're not done, because when you go back, you're going to do remote monitoring for us. You're going to assist us doing remote monitoring, because you guys are doing, like, the first layer 
of just looking at the the stuff at, at the source. We're actually doing the monitoring, mm -hmm. but we're you're gonna help us because if we're, you might find things we miss. Okay. We're gonna certainly find things you guys miss, and it's a collaborative effort. It actually works really well for the study. And you have like ten sets of eyes on the one piece of source. You're going to write more uh, reports, too. Okay. But I'm not sure, you know, well, I guess you're going to teach me on how to put some reports together, though. It, so instead of writing by hand, you type it in Word, and you'll get an email, a template. It's a template. Okay. It's that thing in a Word document, and you just check each box, and then in the comments you type your findings. And you never write I discover. You say CRA observe, okay, or CRA discussed with PI. Um, you, you refer to yourself in the third person, though. but as detailed as possible. Let them tell you to be less detailed. Okay, better than you skipping things because you think it's not important. Because they're gonna audit it years later, and they're gonna say, "Hey, Adi was the CRA for this visit. Look at." Look at his report. That's missing this, this, and that. Even though if you, you're there and you know, but you don't put in your report because you think it's too much. Mm -hmm. No. Caught. You have to write paragraphs in your comments. Write paragraphs. A narrative of what you did, what you discussed, your thoughts on it, and the request for a sponsor to follow up on things that you're not sure about. Better to put it there. Let them take it out. They can take it. They are going to review it anyways. Your lead CRA is going to review your report and have you take things out or have you ask the site for further clarification. But you put them in there. The more the better. Like this example, Monica does a consent and her she's not delegated for that duty. You put in your report. I observe CRA observed. This CRA discussed with PI. PI says it was um, inadvertent. PI wrote a note to file explaining Monica is delegated. Monica late in, late entry initial this duty. PI late entry initial and dated confirmation of this duty. Okay. That all needs to go in your report, and then a copy of that note to file and a copy of that DOA log scanned for you. Detail. Everything. If there was no issue with that, you'd no need for that. Mm -hmm. You'll find issues somewhere else. There's always issues. Pretty good though, right? You feel confident? I'm getting there. <laughs> getting there. I'm getting Compared there. to Monday? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um it's like night and day. Monday I was more like, okay, I don't even know what's going on here, but I had to <laughs> find that to read for like three, three, four hours. Monday's the worst day. For you know. Me. Yeah. Then um Tuesday with the regulatory bag that I went through. And then of course doing that interview which you know which you kind of like was an eye opener into what I'll be getting myself into in the future. Um, you know, it's a great gradual process, and uh, I'm just gonna psych myself to that you have to, man. So. Even like I showed you, even if you start here, you're already way more qualified than a, a to be an assistant. But if you're feeling like you need to brush up on the con meds, the assessments, you start there. In less than a year, you'll be a CRC, and then in two years from there, you can be CRA if you want. Or you can, if you're feeling confident, you can go for a CRC and CRA. Some students go straight to CRA. Depends. Depends how well you do in the interview. Depends 
what you know. The more you know, the more you, the better you can uh, do in the interviews. But for CRA, they want experience. Yeah, absolutely. Which you're starting to get since you've been in the academy. You have it from the beginning, but now you need to like really soak really it all in. Yeah. Do the internship, learn the comments, learn the assessments with the oncology, learn the lab results. I mean, you're not expected to be a clinician, but you need to know as a CRA, okay, what's, this looks normal. This lab result is caused by this drug. Let me see if this patient is taking this comment. Oh, they are. Okay. But then the site didn't put the comment in the EDC. We don't know if this is because of their medical history, this lab result, or if it's a new AE. Hmm. You just got to, like, quick, you got to think like that. Nobody's going to tell you what to do as a CRA. Mm -hmm. I mean, they will, but they're not going to tell you how to think. We won't be so detailed into it because they expect yeah. you to have some kind of knowledge. There you go. They expect you to already know. Whereas here, CRC, CR, and research assistant, they're going to more handhold you. There's benefits to doing that too. It just depends on you. Mm. Everybody's different. Let me stop recording on this thing. Joker signing out.